Hey there guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys a more advanced version of the chat program we've been working on. And anyways, thanks for all the support on the last video. I'm really grateful to all the subscribers that I have so far. And without any further delays, let's just get into the new tutorial. So firstly, I'm going to start by opening the Python GUI. So if I can get into idle. I'm just going to create a new folder called this project Python chat version 2.0. Okay, inside there, like before, we're obviously going to have two other files, one being host and the other one, paste the same, being the client file. So the host is obviously the server file and the client is the receiver file. In the last chat program, we got through to making a really, really basic program and it didn't have no username or no, no kind of identification whatsoever. You could only text each other one at a time. So in this one, we're going to get down to being a bit more complicated on the program and add features like adding usernames to the host and the client so that you can recognize where the messages are coming from. So, um... First off, I'm going to put these on two sides so that it's easier for myself. We're going to import some modules. I'm going to import time to make the looks better. Import socket, which we used to establish connect connections. And also, I'm going to import system. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to start creating the actual program. So we're going to initialize the socket by creating a new variable, just like we did last time. And then also going to create a host, which is going to be host s dot get host name. which basically all it does is if I print the host right now, it will say the host name of my PC, hopefully. Um, so it has no attribute to get host name. Um, we could also try the other way around. So I'm just going to insert my normal IP address. Oh wait, yes. No. Try that one. Okay, that seemed to have worked, I guess. I've been away from programming for a bit, so I can't really remember all the stuff I used to do before. Okay, so yeah, that's what it does. So that creates the host name. So once we have our host, we need to also create a port, which like always, I'm just going to set to 8080. Then we bind the socket to the host and the port that we created earlier. We need to have a tuple, obviously. And then we also uh, do an s.listen which will listen for any incoming connections we're just listening to one connection for now because we only have one client you can also make multiple clients that increase the amount you're going to be listening to so technically after this what you want to do is we do s dot um we do connection so any connection or address that comes in, we need to accept it. So connection comma address equals s dot accept. So what that would do is it would accept the incoming connection. And what we need to do next is while initializing, we might as well also get the user's name. So we Give the user a warm welcome first, so we like um, welcome to Python chat version 2.0 and then do something like initializing order time sleep 
so the program will halt for a second might as well leave a blank space just to make it look better and then next we're going to ask for the user's name down here so we're going to do name equals input string enter your username okay once we have the username what we need to do is we need to oh, okay we need to i forgot the bracket what we need to do next is go down here and while we are waiting for any connections we'll print waiting for any incoming connections right so before anyone connects we're obviously waiting for connections i'm gonna add some blank spaces down here and we need to go all the way back up just so that we can add another blank space here uh, the program's looking really messy right now but as long as it works for me it should be fine because I understand how it works so once we have an incoming connection we're going to shout out the IP address so say um, actually we could, what we do next is we basically copy this program and paste it on this side because it's obviously going to be the same thing Apart from the fact that where there is host, we'll be saying host equals input string, just like last time. Please enter the server address, right? Which is obviously my PC right now, because I'm going to be using both the programs just on one PC, just for demonstration purposes. So instead of binding, listening, doing all that crap, what we're going to do is uh, socket.connect once we have both the host and ports. And then um, obviously we could also create a blank line here. Created a hot comment by mistake. Mm. So yeah, we do not need all of this stuff. Once this is done, we will say Friend, trying to connect to the host name we entered, and then another comma at port, another comma port. Okay, cool. And then we'll do a time halt right here by doing time dot sleep of one second once that is done we need to ask the user for the name so we'll do name equals input string please enter your name and that could have gone a bit above so once you've added the server address you're gonna add the name too okay so we're gonna try and see if it's working so far by running both programs so after this line if it says connected it will be working and after this line if it says received connection that would indicate that it's working too Hopefully there's no errors, fingers crossed, okay. Cool. Initializing, please enter your username. Right, my username is Jesus. That wouldn't do nothing for now, okay, allow access obviously. Um, not on admin rights, so uh, just a second. Once that's done doing, I'm going to be running this program as well. One more you? The username for now doesn't do nothing, but um, we have an error. Okay, forgot the bracket. But once we get further on into the program, it's going to do a lot for us. So the server address is... Whoops, I forgot to print the server address out, so... Mm, okay. 
So once we're done initializing, print blah blah blah. Well, what we're gonna do is also print the host name. So print the host so that we're able to tell the user what our username or host name is. Okay. Cool. This takes quite a long time to load for some reason, probably because my computer is a bit slow, getting old. Alright, so for the username, I'm just going to enter, enter a random username for now. Okay, so it's waiting for incoming connections like we've coded it to. And once you enter a random... There we go. Both programs work flawlessly. For now. <laughs> I like saying it for now because it could be an error at any stage. Um... I'm just going to try and create some blank lines because I don't like keeping them on the same lines. It looks very untidy. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to send this name that we've saved since we've established our connection. So let's just say connection done. And so do we say connection done here. So from this stage, all the initialization process is done. We'll be sending usernames in the next stage. So we'll do s.send name, which is the name up here, and then dot encode, which changes the bytes into bits which we need to encode we cannot send data without encoding across the socket connection for some reason and then once we send that we're going to receive it right here so we're going to say connection dot receive 1024 bytes and we're going to give it a variable so we'll say um senders s name equals so once we're done with that we need to do we need to overwrite the same variable so we're going to say s name equals s name name dot decode basically what that does is changes is it back to its offline format so we can say print s name comma connected to the chat room okay so that's that that far what we're going to be doing next as well is we're going to be sending our username to the other side now so we're going to say connection dot send name dot encode like we did the other time and then once we're done here we're going to receive that username here so we're going to say s dot senders name equals s dot receive from um, 1024 bytes you could increase the amount of bytes but i'm keeping it less because it can crash the program if you run out of memory but 1024 isn't a lot so once we've received it we overwrite it again obviously like we did last time name equals can't type today um s name dot decode okay basically once we're done with that we do the same statement here so you say print s name as join the chat room okay so sure, we're gonna run the program so far and see if everything works fine just before that I would like to add a space because I hate keeping it on the same line hopefully it works alright so initializing till that initializes I'm going to start this one too cool put this on the other side of the screen Okay, it doesn't want to move. That's okay. We're going to copy this one and paste it right here. 
center enter our name is um, make sure to set up the server program first or there's going to be basically um, no connection to the server because it doesn't initialize otherwise unknown server all right so here we are perfectly worked so this is the name we wrote here called unknown server has connected to the chat room and johan has connected to the chat room so we're done with the first stage of the program essentially so this is from when the loop starts messaging loop i'm not going to waste too much time typing that up again i'm just going to copy and paste it um okay so what we have to do here is start a new loop where while one we say message equals input string please enter your message then we do message we send it obviously so connection dot send message dot and code bear in mind we're not going to be sending the names again because we've already sent them through so once we've done that we're going to receive we're going to go here and start a loop as well so while one we do message course s dot receive 1024 and then we'll do message equals message dot decode and then we'll print out the message. So we'll say the user's name, send the message saying so and so. Okay, I'm gonna run this real quick and just check if there's any errors or not. And here we will just say print sent. Okay, let's hope for no errors so far. Um, run this program too. Let's just say one time, I'm just going to copy that. Oops, awesome. Didn't need that to be there, but anyway. That was annoying. That's really weird. It doesn't want to move. Okay, cool. Enter the name being okay. Okay, my bad. We need to start all over again. Cause we need to set up the host first, so we need to type in the name here first. So I'm gonna call this server for now. And then so that it starts running, otherwise it's not gonna be running, so the client's not gonna be able to connect to anything. Finally, it decides to move. Okay, so client. Okay, perfect. So we enter a message. Hello from the server. Okay, let's see if that works. Yeah, perfect. It says client says hello from the server. Just need to transition that a little bit. It looks a bit more better. So. What we do here is instead of just a blank space, we might as well do this just to make it a bit more attractive to the user. And we obviously need a blank line. I like the way I keep forgetting to put it on. Okay, so once that's done, we also need a blank line somewhere around here. Print. Okay, so now it's the client's turn to send the message. So we copy the same code just to save time, paste it on there, and then instead of connection, we write S, and then yeah, that should pretty much do the do it. And then we copy this bit from here. Copy, please. Okay, and then paste it somewhere down here, and whenever wherever it says S, we just change it to connections. Um, okay. 
should work fine according to me. Cool. Let's wait for it to load up. You could take off the initializing effect if you guys think it's a bit too long and time consuming, but for me it's just like a transition in there. That, that was really weird. Oh, okay, I forgot to set up the... I keep forgetting to set up the server before, so... Server. I'm gonna paste it on there. Client. Right, cool, perfect. So we have the messaging, so say hello. Hey there. Uh, welcome to chat version 2.0. Thanks. Oh, so as you guys can see, the chat program's working flawlessly. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions regarding the program, please let me know in the comment section, any errors, anything like that. If you'd like me to create more videos related to this topic, add them down to the comments as well. I would also appreciate a like rating on the video and please subscribe for more. Thank you.